everybody, welcome back to the channel. Zeta here. Um, okay, let's do the astrology report for 25th of July to the 31st of July. And um, as I was writing these notes, I got, this will probably only relate to fellow Brits, because I don't know where this show aired in the world, but there used to be a show in the 90s called Gladiators. And I just kept hearing, gladiator, ready. That's all I keep hearing. Okay. So there's some gladiatorial energy coming through. Uh, remember, the sun moved to Leo uh, 23rd last week. And, um, and two days ago, so I'm recording this on Thursday the 21st. Um, so I know, I'll just do some time shifting. So in two days time, <laughs> the sun moves to Leo, all right? Two days ago, I, you know, my big box of cards here, I closed my eyes. I think I'd just finished um, doing another piece of work. I closed my eyes and plumped my, plumped, plumped my hand into a random deck, pulled out a random card, which changed these notes. Okay, so Leo is speaking loud and proud um, about the, the energy that's going to come in. And so if you've been out of your fire element for a while now, the fire is going to come back. Um, I'm sensing powerfully, at least for the next three months. So as usual, I'm going to read from my notes and tune in to your energy, your psyche, your, your body, your spirit, your heart, and listen for the words behind the words as well. So sun moved to Leo on the 23rd of July. And sun in Leo is bringing fire, fun, playtime. Looks like, and, and with the sun in Leo, looks like cats playing with balls of wool in a loving heart. But with Mercury in Leo, square to the North Node in Taurus and Uranus, it's more like throwing accelerant onto the fire. And there's a new permission slip here to be more of your unexpected, impolite, innovative, I can only work with what I've got, self. And if that displeases you, that's okay with me. Your displeasure belongs to you. My enthusiasm is shining like the sun. Okay, so what we're moving into, it feels like, is letting go of the adaptedness of being human, where we adapt our behavior to please us, letting go of the people pleaser. And then Netflix comes in last night with a brilliant scene from a just a drama series that I was watching. And it was about a woman with a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. And the injury in, in relation to her group of friends who all adore her was throwing her into conflict and frustration of not being able to go back to how she was and to just be normal around those who love her. And I wanted to walk into that scene and suggest that she just play with what she's got and go out and be with those people and be slightly TBI, be in her wound, okay? Be in your mishap, fudge it up, say the wrong thing, but really play with it in a childlike way. If they love you, they'll still love you. They might even like you more because they no longer have to walk on eggshells around you to accommodate your injury. This obviously speaks straight into how we adapt to please others. So there's, yeah, thanks, good reminder. So there's a growing sense of autonomy here and there's the challenge of, actually, if you look at Leo, 
in terms of its opposite sign, which is Aquarius, you're literally looking at the collective and the I. I know Aries is the first house of I, but Leo is about, the collective is about how you work in a collective, finding your place in the collective, finding your usefulness, mission, call it what you will, in the collective and serving that, the bigger, the bigger group. And Leo is about who are you when you stand on stage alone? How do you shine your light in the world? Or do you continue to kind of hide behind the curtain and pretend to be something else so that the audience will love you? And it's the end of that pretense or the beginning of the end of that pretense. It's like, what? I think there's a microchip called raw state, that's what I'm being given. This is raw state, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cause some chaos, all right. And to wrap up the, this is kind of, I'm starting with the overview for the week, to wrap up the overview for the week, my questions might be, what is my motivation in this? And so if we go to the TBI injury, her motivation was to remain normal, was to stay the same in the face of a serious brain injury. Her motivation wasn't curious or exploring or adventurous. It was stayed. It was that concretized mind that hangs on to the past. So what's my motivation in this? And that will inform what is my contribution to this? That's asking the question of how Leo serves the collective, isn't it? Ooh. The harmonizing of that pole. Okay. Wow, so this is like, so what they're showing me is like, this is the challenge of Leo in all of his lionhood and his pride and his sunshine, solar plexus. Uh, standing in his light on stage and doing things where he gets loved, where he gets the big strokes. And shifting that to Actually, where can Leo harness that light and that sunshine and inspire others and give it away? Just keep giving it away. <laughs> Just keep giving it away. Rather than use it to uplight yourself. <laughs> okay. If you have found yourself drawn into drama, and that's gonna, we're ramping now, we're gladiator. This is ramping for the triple conjunction. If you found yourself drawn into drama and it has nothing to do with you, you've got to ask yourself, what am I doing in this? And again, we circle back to, what is my motivation in this? And what is my contribution to this? It's kind of this little drama wheel. Why am I here? You might be there to learn something. You might be there to experience that you're getting triggered in that moment. Great, it's a gift. Take the gift and go and process that trigger. Okay, so same as last week, I'm going to do the overview for each day. And this week I'm guided just because of the colors <laughs> to draw two cards because the colors look lovely. No other reason per day, two cards per day. Monday, the 25th, um, we've got Venus in Cancer squaring Jupiter in Aries, excuse me. When does Jupiter go retrograde? Jupiter's going retrograde. Um, it's obviously not happening this week, next week. So Venus in Cancer, squaring Jupiter in Aries. And what I got from that is it might be time for a relationship audit. Stupid in Aries is, 
it's reaching into more of what we want. Squared by Venus in Cancer. Venus in Cancer is such a loving. It's the part of us that kind of wants to snuggle. It's the part of us that knows where our comfort zone is. It's the part of us that knows where our blanket is. <laughs> where our luxury is. And in that there's a, a challenge with Jupiter in Aries saying, what are you giving to your relationships? That's the question, what are you giving and what are you receiving? So it might be time for a relationship audit. What more than anything is a deal breaker in your relationships, which begs another question of what are you tolerating and not loving in your relationships? Where is that common breaking point now as you go back through history, through your history and just tune into, I'm talking intimate relationships here, will apply to all relationships, but my focus is pulled to intimate relationships. And if you go back to the last, few intimate relationships and you do it in a kind of semi-meditative soft state and this is an exercise I do with clients so I'll run you through it um, relationship order is get into soft state and then you allow the the spirit to do the work and your intention is to look for commonality and so an ex-partner might come up great don't question it write the name down and then tune into the first three words about that ex-partner, first three words or four words, write them down, move on and what else, whatever else comes up, capture that and what are the three main attributes of that person. And then after you finish that piece of work, if you go down the list and circle any repetitions, that's in you, that's the part of you that's calling that in, calling that into your field. And again, part of this big Leo season is take responsibility. It's take ownership and responsibility. So if there's a common something that breaks the relationship, the point where somebody walks away, there's real deep learning in there, deep learning in there. Because in what we avoid, well, they say what we resist persists, and it surely does. Because until that wounding in us, or that glitch in our software is corrected, it will keep pulling the same, it's the law of physics, it will keep pulling the same back to it, okay? So where's that common breaking point in terms of emotion? And we come back again to what emotional, well, what is your deepest emotional needs? What are your deepest emotional needs? And what emotional demands do we place on others? So this energy can also be quite emotionally manipulative. It can be where one makes the other responsible for their happiness. If you hear, you make me, that's uh, divesting of responsibility. That's uh, abdication of responsibility. If something makes you unhappy, you are choosing to feel unhappy about something. So switch the energy. Why am I unhappy about that? What's making me unhappy about? What's pissing me off about wet towels on the bathroom floor? Classic. <laughs> so look for emotional demands that you might place on others and vice versa. Okay, so it's a quick and dirty for Monday. Most of this is quite quick and dirty because I'm so in the triple conjunction and right behind that I've got Leo season and right in that somewhere is the lion's gate and uh, that's screaming it's that's really really singing to me okay cards for Monday cards for Monday <laughs> okay <clears throat> yeah so wow gosh 44 this is God, easy, slow. The sixth house is about the mundane. It's about dotting the I's and crossing the T's. It's about 
foundational building, look at this 44, it's like building the foundation. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I don't know when it was, two, three readings, readings ago when I was talking about what looks like a strong, secure, reliable relationship to you. Not a dreamy, loving, love and light, strong, reliable, secure, foundational relationship. Okay, because it, it, all of life depends upon the foundation upon which we stand. And if we've built that foundation well, through critical inquiry, radical ownership, self-management, self-love, then it can withstand much more than um, a relationship based on infatuation. So sustainability is the foundation I'm talking about that will create the constant. So you've got to know who you are, what feeds your soul. When you know all of that foundational blueprint stuff, you can build from there, you can build anything from there. And so in the relationship audit, we're being asked to really establish the foundation of how do I want to be loved? How do I want to be valued? How do I want to be enriched? And how am I able to do all of those things for others? Where is my limit to giving? And loads more good stuff. So, dot the eyes. Cross the T's, do the work, Monday. Uh, oh. See, it's the pink. <laughs> Beauty and devotion. This is two of cups energy to become devoted to yourself. Priestess, mystic and teacher. So the priestess is devoted to the intuition because when the Capricornian structures, well, they're coming down, when they fall at our feet, what we'll be left with is gut, intuition and heart in service to the soul. That's it strip right back, raw state. <laughs> mm. The mystic wants to do it in a unique way as well. The, the mystic can't walk out with a brain injury and imagine that she's the same as she was. The mystic needs to birth, needs to teach itself a new way of coming into commitment and devotion to self, to this is all I've got to work with at the moment. That's beautiful. Oh, I love that message. Yep, okay. So moving on to Tuesday. Tuesday the 26th, we have Mercury and Leo. <laughs> I literally mean thinking about love. Think about how we love ourselves and how we love others. What is your love language? Ah, oh, it's a lovely question. What is your love language? Is there pretense in it? Or does it roar like a lion? So Mercury in Leo is in an exact square to Mars in Taurus at 14 degrees. <laughs> So how are you bringing the light into that container? What are you building? What are you building with that light that's coming in? And Mercury in Leo is also trine, Jupiter in Aries. So we've got the conflict of an exact square tempered by the harmony of a trine to the expansion in Aries. So there's real room to grow here on Tuesday to deeply challenge yourself to stand in that square with Mars in Taurus, all that fire and earth. <laughs> and 
And this is where the gladiator energy comes in. So there's a potential for real conflict here. And there's also a potential for real growth. Like, wow, I didn't know I was capable of that. Wow, I stood my ground. And that felt leadership. Uh, there's also opportunities for leadership through dictatorship, arrogance, and a question about, do you even know what it is you're defending? Hmm. Do you even know what it is you're fighting for? Because if we're coming through ancestral DNA, then we might be blindly pursuing the fight. Like a soldier not knowing why he's defending his country. What is he defending? That's it. What are you defending? Are you defending? No, well, that's for you to. <laughs> It's yours, you've got to find your own autonomy here. It's like people arguing about love. This is a classic. If they love me, they would. Love isn't conditional. <laughs> love is love. It's love. <laughs> if it's love, it's love. And again, we come back to the foundation. How have you built your foundation of love? Because if it's strong and coming from a place of integrity, unshakable integrity it can sustain challenges it won't be airy fairy it will be strong and we can love in the face of conflict we're that powerful as human beings we can love in the face of conflict we also so the mercury trine jupiter which brings the solve to the wound and this trine offers optimism to bring sunshine into your thoughts and words and deeds. And again, that's that Leo challenge to shine your light in the face of conflict, to be powerful in the face of conflict, to really harness that harmonious trine, active intelligence blueprint. It's the medicine to stop talking about love and just be it. Not much of a challenge then, huh? Tuesday, cards. <sighs> Rootedness. The Imam Kuali is a, is a point on the wheel and I can't remember where it is, forgive me. Um, and again, this is, I mean, 38.11.2. There's courage in this number. 38.11.2 is having the courage to harness that 33 energy coming in here. Christ consciousness to bring it right down into the physical and eight is a result of four four <sighs> through the intuition and sensitively out is to birth that mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's birthing a new way to communicate and it's, it's going to take some courage. It's going to take some courage. So. It's going to take some courage. Don't dim to fit in. That's a brilliant message. Look at that. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? This is people pleasing. Write it down, really bring it 
so you can see it and so you can feel it and get it out of you and then work with it. How do I dim my light? Because the challenge is going to come as Uranus ramps. Uranus is the accelerant, revolutionizing, accelerant. But we can do it for ourselves or we're going to get caught up in the change. Mercury and Leo, so lots of thinking. I might get lost in thinking about how to harness sunshine. <laughs> love is love, sunshine is sunshine. It's lots of lots of energy I can feel it. Lots of thoughts and thinking. Yeah. Stop talking about love and just be it. But what is love? Well, there's another thing. What is love to you? It's, it's infinite and unconditional. <laughs> Wednesday the 27th. So now we have Mercury in Leo, trine, Chiron stationing retrograde in Aries with Venus in Cancer conjunct Lilith in Cancer. This feels heavy. And how do we speak to ourselves when we fall down? How do we pick ourselves up again? Because when we're down, when we hit that low, well, again, it's building that foundation of what is my love language. And we can circle around in that low and really bury ourselves like a tick into that old victim martyr energy. Hard to get out of that. Or we can find ways to weave, heal, love that into the foundation because it's part of us. But we can harness it and use it in different ways. You know, and we can fully heal it and uplift it and transmute it and do whatever we want with it. And that's the point. We can do whatever we want with that energy. So, how do you speak to yourself when you fall down? When life gets on top of you, when it all gets a bit heavy, and how do you pick yourselves up again? Where's that sentence? There's a sentence for this, because Venus came in somewhere here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a paragraph from right at the end to here because this speaks to. Wednesday the 27th. Venus is challenging how we own and use wounding in the self. Because with the energies that are circling this week, it's going to make us look at our ugly mirror and how we might use wounding to manipulate others. Well, you know you can't be that way around me because of what my parents did to me. Stop doing that, it makes me feel. Okay, so it's okay to stare into the ugly mirror. You'll end up giggling. It's all pretty funny, it's all a game. It's about the anticipation of our dam breaking open, moving into vulnerability, love language, and how we've moved through our life in the face of it. We've been holding that dam back for thousands of years, <laughs> behaving like peasants and bowing to kings. It's all in the DNA. <laughs> But now we become kings and we become queens. And that's dangerous. We need some danger. Venus is challenging us to work the problem. So got Pallas Athena coming in here. She's like the female CEO. She's like that powerful feminine. Walks into a room and everybody puts their pen down and looks. <laughs> it's that energy. Work the problem and perhaps stop avoiding the anticipation of what needs to come up. 
what needs to come out for healing so that we can move through old stagnant blocks in mature and courageous ways that do not bow to fear. It's like Venus is standing there looking down at us saying, come on, get up. She's behaving like a champion. Get up. Love it. Such a roar, like a lion. <laughs> That's Wednesday. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. Or do we avoid the fall? Because you can't rise until you've fallen on your ass. I, I always say to people, you haven't lived until you've had a spectacular nervous breakdown. <laughs> that's, that really teaches you about the central nervous system. That really teaches you about how everything comes into play. To fall on its ass, to rise, we've got to know when we're on our ass and stop pretending that we're fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Oh. Wow, 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 wow. Passion. Passion to love and the passion to fight. And both are okay. I want to be really challenging here because <clears throat> this is what's coming in. I want to say it's time to stop painting our way out of it. It's time to start using the throat chakra to bring into form what is trapped behind the damn wall. <laughs> behind the damn wall. <laughs> and to speak it through because this fall wants action, it wants foundation. And we can paint it through and that will trigger some internal healing for damn sure. But when we do internal healing, the way that we practice that, it's like building a business model. You don't know it's going to work until you've tried it. So we build new foundations, we build new blueprints. How do we know if they work if we don't use them? It's part of the avoidance. Mm. Why some deep challenges this week. <laughs> so this is the four the four wants physical action and physical movement do something to change your energy that might be just opening your mouth and releasing what's trapped there's so much work it's been going on for months now so much throat healing happening <laughs> it's like that glow is coming straight through the solar plexus through the throat <clears throat> yeah learn to speak in solar plexus how do you dance with others how do you work out new dance moves without anybody having to lead how do you build harmony that moves in unison is different <coughs> okay <coughs> thank you throat i hear you thursday 28 we have uh mercury in leo squares the north node and uranus in taurus so the triple conjunction is almost complete. It won't be until August the 1st when Mars also moves into Taurus that we have the triple conjunction and kaboom. So really ramping on Thursday. Uh, Jupiter station, there it is. <clears throat> Jupiter stations retrograde in Aries. So after Thursday, it will begin to move retrograde. And on Thursday, we have a new moon in Leo. Yeah, baby. I had to pull some cards for that, didn't I? <clears throat> now, new moon in Leo. When I just tuned in to the energy, um, 
what I got was letting go of people pleasing and ego strokes. Oh, they like me. Because <laughs> I did that thing called they like me. Because I did that thing. And it's just, it's addictive. It's addictive. It's like getting likes. You know. Learning how to explore, get it wrong, take criticism without it wounding the pride and the ego of the lion. And again, we go back to the TBI, the traumatic brain injury. Learning how to explore, living life with a brain injury. Learning how to explore, getting it wrong in front of others, looking a fool. Learning how to explore the criticism of others because you're behaving like an ass. Yeah, I've got TBI. <laughs> and nobody pleasing. This is how we find harmony and difference. The only way to do that is to embrace the difference, not to try and correct it or auto-tune it to make yourself more comfortable. I feel really uncomfortable in front of you now, and that's okay. <laughs> You're really triggering my sense of normality and comfort. <laughs> yeah. Mm, and what happens when our pride and ego is wounded? Well, we move into vulnerability would be my answer to that. So big picture, we're in the maturation of autonomy and right use of power and the degree point of five degrees 38. It's 16.7. 16.7 is all over the field at the moment. It's all about right use of power. It's about how you bring the light into the grail, into the heart and how you, seven is fusion, is fusing light into matter, it's the beginning, it's, it's creation, it's a creation energy, it's how you spin your pentagram, it's how you harness active intelligence and use it in the world, but it asks the question about how are you using your power, are you using your power to get the big strokes? Are you using your power to sit on a pedestal and behave like a guru? Yeah, that's lovely. Or are you not aware that you're using your power, but you're just beaming like a lion? <laughs> you're just beaming like the sun and it will be what it will be. That simplifies it. I like that. I think you. Sun and the moon are both in Leo at 538. Five degrees, 38 minutes. So they're both at that 16, seven point, the sun and the moon. What is illuminated and what is not illuminated. Mm -hmm. And again, right use of power might be what is not illuminated is freaking me out. <laughs> I'm getting impatient. I'm getting frustrated, so be frustrated. Be impatient, what does that look like? If it's, <laughs> if it's expressed as a dance move, what does it look like? Meet it, bring it to life, bring all of it to life. <laughs> so sun and moon, both in Leo at five, or both trining Jupiter in Aries, which is about expansion. So it might be the expansion of finding peace. It might be the expansion of finding sunshine, the expansion of finding frustration. <laughs> Leo is fixed fire. Fire as an element is mutable. Mm. Fire destroys and creates. It's like Shiva, isn't it? It's like Shiva Shakti energy. Destroy it and create it. So that you're always in the moment, this here now moment, not hanging on. So fire destroys and creates. Fixedness refuses to change. TBI, she refused to change because she couldn't own the vulnerability that she was somehow weakened in the eyes of others because her brain was misfiring and causing all sorts of glorious glitches in her behavior. I mean, fabulous, it's fabulous to watch. Okay. So this first house trine wants to support the maturation of autonomy. 
not in a way that thinks it has power over others. Remember, opposite to Leo is Aquarius, the collective. It's responsible, it's very responsible. It's like Leo's growing up actually. It wants to support feeling what it's like to stand alone on the stage of life without a script and to perhaps stubbornly open your heart, and let go of the plan and trust. And perhaps there's a challenge to fully opening your heart. This is where we talk about love and we don't be love. What are you being invited into? <laughs> this is off you pop energy. There's the stage door. All oh, right. There's the stage door. It's your choice. <laughs> Go out and play alone. Fall over, graze your knees. Feel alone. Meet people. Laugh. Be surprised. Go wild. Let life mess your hair up a bit. This is a beautiful cacophony of playful energy where there's no up or down or right or wrong <laughs> or past or future. It's like a, it's like a children's play area. And I always say it's the child that raises the adult because what we can't look at in children is what we can't look at in ourselves. Thursday. Mm. Ah. Opportunities. What I'm getting from this is, uh, is opportunities to move into a different expression of yourself just because you can, without any justification or, or without any self-justification or defending mechanism. Just because you can, as if you were an actor practicing 20 new aspects a day. Opportunities opportunities, new moon in Leo, how are you expressing yourself? How many more ways can you express yourself? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> Pick the bloody phone up. <laughs> okay. So remember, Mercury is in Leo. Messages. Answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Get out on stage. But this costume is ridiculous and I feel stupid. Get out on stage. <laughs> Giving the pride and the ego long holiday. They're quite tired. All right, that's Thursday. Oh, um, yeah, okay. Uh, shall I do? Shall I do? Let me just do a couple of new moon, new moon Leo cards. Yeah, please. Do you have a message for the new moon in Leo? Activate and harness personal power. The light is within, not without. Stop looking outwards. Take that moment to drop into silence. Way too many. Yeah, that's it. That's all I need. 
nine, let go. Okay. <laughs> Leo, new moon, rise like the phoenix. You won't do that by being the same. Trust in your difference and allow yourself to change, you little mutants. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Friday the 29th, sun in Leo opposes Pluto in Capricorn. This is it, this is the line in the sand. Oh, my solar plexus is, is really, really doing something here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel fidgety and uncomfortable. There's like a part of me that wants to hide. <laughs> okay, sit up, sit straight. Sun in Leo opposing Pluto in Capricorn. So remember, Pluto and Capricorn will be there for another 18 months. It, it will retro and go direct and retro and go direct. No more doing things in the old rulership way. Time to shine like the lion, no matter how others perceive you. It's a similar message, isn't it? No more manipulating the way we love to fit a structure that's basically psychopathic narcissistic if you're fitting into that you're perpetuating the old if you're birthing new light and going phoenix on its ass then you're birthing something you might not be able to see just yet and that might trigger fear but take fear by the hand and kiss it hard on the mouth would be my best guidance <laughs> okay North Node. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're bursting it. It's happening. It's happening and it will happen whether we like it or not. Whether we can bring grace and beauty to it or stumble in on our ass with our hair on fire. It's, it's happening in the collective. Hmm. Okay, my eye has gone straight back to this card, so I just want to reiterate this message in line with this message. So the inner temple again is talking about devotion and guiding you into your heart. And that might be in a moment of conflict, that might be in a moment of flinching, that might be in a moment where you're standing in the presence of something, wow, might be in any moment. And when that moment causes an unsuredness, um, moment of doubt or a wobble to get back into trust go to the heart remember in the head there are only questions in the heart there are only answers i just heard but what if right that's the mind that's the mind coming in but what if it doesn't fit the order the paradigm no buts go to the heart and you take the first thing that's given to you trust Trust, 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 trust in the unknown. Trust in the unmade. Trust in the unstructure. It's all change. It's all change. Beautiful. Quick slurp, and then we'll do Saturday. So, <clears throat> 
Saturday is all about Mars, really. Um, Mars is now within spitting distance of the triple conjunction. So Mars in Taurus squaring Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. That's six degrees. Other Mars aspects on Saturday, square the moon, square to Mercury, sextile Venus, conjunct Uranus, conjunct the North Node. Mars is doing a lot. And so to, to get a kind of handle on all of this energy, I had to come right out, take a big view. And what I saw in the big view is there's an arc curve and the arc curve in the bigger picture seems to be choices between the dictators with no principles, so the psychopaths, versus global peacemaking initiatives, which begin obviously in the personal with how we make peace with ourselves. And that's when I look into Saturn square Uranus and Neptune sextile Pluto. Neptune sextile Pluto, a sextile is very harmonious, peacemaking, it's gentle, um, collaborative, reconciliation, lovely grown up healthy energy. And Saturn square Uranus, well Saturn is challenging the accelerant, challenging the acceleration. So it is a dictatorial energy. So, and that's all I've written for Saturday, because to go into all these aspects, just say, it would be saying the same thing. Mars, all of this Mars activity on Saturday, ramping into this triple conjunction. It, well, let's see what the cards say, but, but I might say, oh, there's two there, there's three. Um, Yeah, you know, I might say stay in the heart, like all day on Saturday and make your inner narrative from the heart. Get your answers from the heart. Might be my best guidance for Saturday because this all of this Mars energy could be highly creative. But could be something else. I don't, I don't do world news. So if anybody hears of anything on the world news. Uh, thank you, oh, it's a beautiful word. Saturday, dignified strength. Dignified strength, that 13, four, look, that's building the blueprint. Oh, that's, that's building the blueprint, holy, holy moly. Dignity on Saturday. Oh, wow. Stand in your light. And if all you can manage in that moment is the silence of standing in your light, that's as dignified as it gets. Your vibration is rising. If you like, you are the oracle, then you are the oracle. The pillar of light. Mm. Dignity on Saturday. Hang on, there's an extra card here. What is this? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I've got to bring this in because um, I've just about finished writing the notes for the triple conjunction. And there was a divine detour halfway through the reading when this came in. So Virgo is playing a part in this triple conjunction, although she's not present and visible, the energy of Virgo is coming in.
I'll speak more into that card when I do the, the big reading. Hmm, actually, I won't. This is speaking straight into the arc curve that I was talking about and the, the battle for rulership between dictatorship and reconciliation. And what this is saying is, I know, it, It's about really taking ownership of the psychopathy in us. And I guess it's speaking to the psychopaths more than to the peacemakers. Yeah, this is quite complex energy actually, because if this speaks to the peacemaker, then it might ask the peacemaker, what are you taking responsibility for in this? And if it speaks to the psychopath, the dictator energy, then it might say it's safe for you to digest your part in what got created here. Again, it's reconciliation, it's harmony. I'm gonna keep that card out because she'll come into the next reading. Saturday, okay, so Saturday dignity. Sunday the 31st. We've got Sun in Leo, which is in an exact trine, that's harmony, to Jupiter in Aries, Jupiter now retro in Aries at eight degrees. And Sun in Leo square Mars in Taurus. And Mercury in Leo opposing Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. And some gorgeous energy here on Sunday, confidence, optimism, travel, adventure. And, and that can be, it doesn't have to be physical travel. That can be travel within, adventure within, finding new lands within, new planes of existence within. Expansion and learning, strength and tenacity may turn into impulsivity and taking risks, but it's tempered by that Mercury opposite Saturn which can offer stunning mental agility, really quick thinking, and the ability to work methodically and attain success. So this is that sixth house sustainability. Um, this energy is stay with it and see it through to the end. Okay, and that is it. That is it for the notes. So let's do, what do we want? I want that. We have some final cards, please, for next week, the final week of July. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so after I dealt the seven astro cards and the seven light activation cards, I turned both decks upside down <laughs> to see the underlying energy. <laughs> Lol. Underlying energy. Pluto and rebirth. And the underlying energy birthing a new age. I can't make this up. Birthing a new age. Look at that beautiful, beautiful image. Birthing new creations, dreaming a new world. It's not dreaming it into being. We've dreamt for long enough. It's building it with all this four energy. It's building it now. It's getting it through the throat and expressing it, bringing it into the material world. Okay, gorgeous. Right, let's see what the beasties have to say. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't make it up. Thirty seven ten one. Oh gosh. Be generous of spirit. Well, there's a lot of spirit in that number. So, lion is all over the shop. What have we got? You might be a stinky skunk, <laughs> but you're worth it. <laughs> know your worth. And again, this is standing in that pillar of light. Why are there three cards on the table? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I didn't pull the cards for Sunday. Sorry. Know your worth. Be generous to yourself. Be generous to yourself before you're generous to others. Miracles come in many ways and they come through different things and people and messages and songs and feathers and nature and the wind. Eyes, ears, heart, soul, open. Cat spirit, claim your independence. Same messages, look, believe in yourself. And if it gets a bit complex, like all of that Mars energy, take a step back, get right back and see the big picture. And this is oh, lovely. That's moving out of the Leo axis point into the Aquarius. That will help you see like a visionary. Because when you see things globally, you can become a speck, like standing at the foot of a mountain and going, this is bigger than me. <laughs> That's where we learn to get out of our own way. See the bigger picture. And the cards for Sunday. Why didn't I do the cards for Sunday? Oh, I know it's because of that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, lol. Okay. So Sunday, we've got this arc energy presenting um, with some beautiful confidence and optimism, travel, adventure, expansion, all this changing energy, lots of opportunity. So this is the shift from dreaming it to building it and it needs structure. I tell you, it's a small thing but capturing my downloads, writing them up and bringing them to camera has, has added clarity, so much clarity and an order to what I'm trying to bring in. I'm not so all over the place. I'm actually using that Saturnian energy to slow me down. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't brought you the retrogrades. There's quite a few. I think we've got five retrograde. Um, I think we've got five planets in retrograde for next week, for the last week of July. So keep reviewing. And remember, what's my motivation in this? What is my part in this? What made me choose to be in this? <laughs> yes, cut the cords. If, if, there's, if there's no reason for you to be in this, cut the cords and cause the shift. 
call back your power. It's calling back your power. Beautiful. Savina's going to get up. <laughs> okay, and that's it. We'll have an abundance card to wrap the week up. Weep up. And then I'll have a think about doing the triple conjunction video. We're hurtling into August. I don't know where it's going. We have a card to wrap the week up for next week. Yeah, absolutely. Courage of a lion. Courage of a lioness, actually. Because <laughs> lions are a bit late. You need to rebirth, lion. <laughs> you need to give your woman some time off. <laughs> Stop eating her kills. Courage, strength, courage, strength, courage, strength. Okay. Let me be open to courageously take the steps that are shown. So Mercury, there'll be tons of messages. I mean, the energy is going to start really speeding up, kind of eight of ones, coming in quickly. So Mercury in Leo is joyful thought, can be joyful thought, can be awful thought. Are we tired of this word yet? <laughs> or is it just me? Yeah, it's waking up to all that you are. Waking up to the whole lot. Courage, okay. My people, um, thank you for being here. And thanks for all your comments. I love your comments. And welcome again, new subs. And I will see you all again soon. Take care. Bye.